traffic. Speeds of up to 110 miles per hour are common. It's the middle of the night, and Callie is working his usual shift. I'm going to be reacting to a video of a South African paramedic responding to a gunshot wound victim in the middle of the night. Make sure to hit like, subscribe down below, and let's dive into it. A young man sleeping in his car was shot for no apparent reason. By the time Callie arrives at the scene, firefighters had already begun basic treatment. As Callie, our paramedic, shows up on scene, we see the fire department providing basic care. We have a gunshot wound victim here. The patient is awake, but we have to figure out where the gunshot wound is and where it is going to determine a lot on how injured this patient will be. We just came here uh, and we found him lying here. At the moment, there are no ambulances available. Now picture this. We have a handful of firefighter staff on scene. We have one patient has been shot through the chest. The bullet has gone through the entire chest. So we're thinking about the heart, we're thinking about the lungs, right? And I don't know if you caught that at the end, there are no ambulances available. Kelly, our paramedic, came in a fly car. So we have to treat this patient on the street with all our gear until an ambulance comes. In South Africa, at, during this time period, there was a large amount of call volume and not enough ambulances. In serious danger, the man was shot through the lung. We are seeing the early stages of a high-level trauma patient. This patient was shot once through the lung, all the way through the chest. Now, what we're concerned about is a pneumothorax. A pneumothorax is when we have a bullet enter the, the lung cavity. What happens is air from the outside world, called a sucking chest wound, sucks air into the chest, and we actually collapse the lung. And eventually, if enough air goes in, we put so much pressure, we collapse the, over the heart, creating the heart failure in our patient, and the patient has a bad outcome. So you're gonna see here in a moment how we fix that at the first stage. In order to prevent this, Callie quickly grabs the nearest piece of plastic he can find. He needs to make a one-way valve so that no more air can enter the chest cavity. It can only escape. What the team is doing now, we're getting vital signs. We're gonna give oxygen. We're gonna create a three-sided dressing here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let the air escape from the chest, but we don't want more to get sucked back into the chest. It's called a three-sided dressing. They're creating on the front and also the back. And then we're gonna go from there. I dropped the BP like a mother. So we didn't jack him up on some fluids and we'll take it from there. His blood pressure is dropping and the man's veins are flat. Callie struggles to get IV fluids in him. Again, imagine right now, we are literally setting up shop in the middle of the street, taking care of this patient. We have no ambulance available. We're not transporting the patient to a trauma center. We are working this patient in the middle of the street and we're gonna stabilize him there because we have nowhere else to go. So right now we're gonna get IV access. The best we can do at this point, the blood pressure is going down because the patient is bleeding out, is to give the patient IV fluids, at least to stabilize his blood pressure for the moment until we can transport the patient to hospital whenever the ambulance comes. And it's gonna be a long time those ambulance end up arriving. I said, I didn't shoot him. He's fighting us way too much and he needs O2 and stuff more than he'd like to. So let's rather put him to sleep, put a tube in. We don't have an ambulance. So let's stabilize him for now. Uh, get him calm, get him relaxed, sort out the bleeding. When a patient loses a lot of blood, they can become altered mental status. So they can be difficult patients to manage. You have a patient's blood pressure going down rapidly. They're bleeding out. We have a, a pneumothorax going on inside the lung. We want to make sure this patient gets enough oxygen. We try to give the patient normal oxygen. The patient's fighting with the mass because they're altered. Kelly right now does not have an ambulance. So he's thinking, okay, how do we get the best control of this patient? We're going to sedate the patient. We're going to go ahead and place an uh, ET tube in this patient. We're going to secure the airway, we're going to improve oxygenation, and then we're going to cover up the patient the best we can to treat for some hypothermia, and we're going to control the patient's bleeding. Let's continue from there. Just as the morning's light illuminates the city, 
an ambulance arrives. Pull him up, let's get pumping. Think about this, when Callie first got on scene, it was late in the night. Now they're on the road with the trauma patient. You saw the patient, we had the special blanket on for hypothermia treatment. Patient was intubated, we have IV lines connected. Callie literally was working this patient in the middle of the street for an unknown amount of time. Could have been 30, 40 minutes, could have been hours, we don't know. All we know is that Callie took care of this patient, stabilized this patient, and was literally waiting with the fire department crew, waiting for the ambulance. The patient is still alive. Through all of this, getting shot through the lung, tremendous care here by this paramedic, and now they're transporting the hospital. Let's see what happens next. Unfortunately, the lung bleeds a lot. Um, I think it's actually neck or something. It's quite close to the sternum, so... I actually think he's gonna do quite well, man. Gonna have a bit of a scar, but six things for so. Look how focused Callie here is. You can see his demeanor throughout the call. He knows that he has to get a lot done and he has very limited resources. We've seen him cutting up plastic. This public ambulance service in South Africa at this time was very, very low on resources. We can see how he used his limited resources the best of his ability to provide high level care to stabilize this patient and get him to hospital without the help of even having an ambulance to get him to high level trauma care. If you are one of these three people, if you're getting ready for school, if you're in school right now, or getting ready for national registry exam, I've created my video vault, my video course, and it includes everything you need from all the way in the beginning of school, all the way to national registry, EMT, advanced EMT, and the paramedic level. It's the first link in the description. You can grab a lifetime access for that right now. Go ahead there, and my friends, I will see you in the next video. Take care.